Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Firstly, my sincere apologies for not publishing my video on Monday, which was yesterday for the leadership video, which I had promised. Uh, as usual, I was in a leadership workshop yesterday and that's why I couldn't do the video yesterday, but that's no excuse. I'll make sure that next Monday onwards, all the videos are published Monday and Friday as promised. Okay, so my apologies for that. Now let's start with continuing about what is leadership from part one that we covered. What did we cover in part one? If you've not seen it, let me give you a quick recap on that. What is the definition of leadership? The definition of leadership is a leader or leadership is the ability to lead, which means it's the ability to influence people towards a common goal or a common culture or both, right? And there are two types of leadership. It's either direct leadership or it's indirect leadership, which means people like Sachin Tendulkar, they are indirect leaders. They're indirect leaders because they are uh, influencing people towards a goal. You know, there, a lot of people in the country are influenced by Sachin Tendulkar and creating a goal of becoming a cricketer, right? Of Or of uh, creating goals of becoming something in the industry of cricket. Now, that's where Sachin Tendulkar is an indirect leader because he's only influencing them by his extraordinary performance. But he's not able to directly talk to these people. He's not able to directly communicate with these people and make them a certain kind of a person, which means he's not able to groom them uh, into a certain kind of a culture. Right. And that's why it's not direct leadership. It's more indirect leadership. So any any artist, any uh, superhero that you look up to, any person that you look up to, and if you can't meet them, if you can't talk to them, they're indirect leaders to you. But if they are talking to you, if they are communicating to you in one way or another, then like for an example, right now I'm talking to you on YouTube. You don't directly communicate with me, but I am talking to you through YouTube. So it's a long distance communication, but the communication is there then this is not indirect leadership. This is more direct leadership, right? So in indirect leadership, what happens is uh, people like Sachin Tendulkar, people like Amitabh Bachchan, these are people who are leaders, no doubt, but they're directing people uh, or they're influencing people, they're leading people towards a common goal, correct? Whereas direct leaders like Ratan Tata, direct leaders like Narayan Murthy, direct leaders like Steve Jobs, direct leaders like, uh, for an example, uh, Azim Premji, all these are leaders who are directing people, leading people, influencing people, not only towards a common goal, but also towards a common culture. Does that make sense? Right? And that is why this is called as direct leadership. First question you have to ask yourself is, are you a direct leader or an indirect leader? Now, it doesn't matter if you're an indirect leader, but you need to remember that you are a leader. And if you're an indirect leader, then you need to remember that you're constantly influence people either consciously or unconsciously towards a common goal. Right? And if you do it more consciously, it becomes even more powerful because then you influence even more people. And the level of people or the amount of people that you influence is the level of your leadership. Let me repeat that. The amount of people that you influence is the level of your leadership. So if you're only able to influence, let's say, 10 people, then that's the level of your leadership. If you're able to lead and influence 100 people, then that's the level of your leadership. If you're able to lead and influence 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, million, 2 million, a billion people in the country, that's the level of your leadership. So for an example, Mr. Modiji. Um, Modi ji is able to communicate and directly influence people towards a common goal of the country, which is to make the country a better place to live, pay taxes. You know, he's creating a particular goal for people, which is a common goal, but he's also influencing people towards a common culture, right? Of what kind of human being we need to be. And that's where he's a direct leader. But if you look at it, he's able to influence not a few people, not a few hundred people, not a few hundred million people, but really a billion people in the world right now, which is especially in our country. In fact, Modiji has an influence right now on not only people inside our country, but even outside our country. So that's the level of his leadership. So the amount of people that you influence is going to be the level of your leadership. Make sense? Now, in this video today, we're going to talk about what kind of a person is a leader? Who is a leader? Who is a leader? So for that, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions first, and I want you to interact with me, okay? So get ready to pause this video when I tell you to, and make a few notes with your notepad if you have one, and even if you don't have one, make mental notes of the question I'm asking you, okay? Great, so here's get ready. The first question is, I want you to think of three leaders who are rich and famous, rich and famous, but the criteria is you want your children to become like them, or if you don't have children right now, but if you would have children in the future, you want your children to become like these leaders. But the criteria is they need to be rich also. They need to be famous also, which means most people should know about them. Which means if you tell me about them right now in this video chat later in the comment section, I should be able to recognize those names. I want really big names, rich names, famous names. But these are names, leaders. You want your children to become like them. 
All right, so quickly pause the video. Come on, come on, interact with me. Pause the video right now and think of three names now. Go for it. Okay, so I have not paused the video, but I hope you have, all right? Now here's my second question. After I ask you the question again, remember to pause the video, interact with me, okay? Here's the second question. I now want you to think of three leaders who are again rich and famous, again rich and famous, but you're gonna warn your children, do not become like these leaders, okay? So I repeat, they are rich, they're famous, they're so big that if you put their names in the comment section today right now, and I want you to, all right? That's how I would know that you're interacting with me. So these are three leaders who are rich and famous, we all know about them, but you're gonna warn your children, do not become like these people, all right? Who are these three leaders? Give me their names, quickly. So pause the video, write down their names right now. Okay, so again, I did not pause the video, but I hope you did. I'm trusting you there, okay? All right, so let's look at some of the names that you might have got. Uh, I'll tell you some of the names that come to my mind uh, about the first three leaders who I want my children to become like them. I don't have any right now, but if I would have children, I would love, want my children to become like them. For an example, Ratan Tata Ji, Mr. Modi Ji, and definitely Mr. Azim Premji. Now, these are leaders who are rich, they are famous, even I would say someone like Ramdev Baba Ji or uh, someone like uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. Now, these are leaders I would really want my children to become like them. And they're all from different industries, if you see. Some of them are from corporates. Uh, Ramdev Baba is from the yoga industry. Shri Shri Ravi Shankar is more from the religious or spiritual industry. And yet, I would say any one of these industries, if my child becomes like any one of them, I would be very proud of them, my child, right? But then there are three other leaders who are also rich, who are equally famous like the first three ones, and I don't want my children to become like them. Let me give you a few names. And don't mind, but uh, I don't know which party you belong to, Congress or BJP, it doesn't matter to me, but I wouldn't want my children to become like Mr. Rahul Gandhi, or uh, let's say someone like Hitler, or someone like Asaram Bapu. These are all rich people, by the way, really, really big people. They've got a lot of money, they've got a lot of followers, a lot of people like them, by the way, they have their own followers, right? And yet, I'm saying, I don't want my children to become like some of these leaders. Now, why is that? Why is that? What is the difference between the first three leaders and the second three leaders? Why are you more interested in your children becoming like the first three ones and not like the second three ones, the, the second part of the three kind of leaders? Here's the basic reason behind that. My definition of what I have created in my leadership workshops, who is a leader? Leaders have two identities from my point of view, from my perspective, one, very, very important. All leaders, all leaders are great human beings. That's who I think leaders really need to be. Great human beings, really, really, really great human beings who are value driven, not material driven, who are principle driven, not, uh, not things driven, which means they're not running behind things. They're more, they're more focused and obsessed and loving principles in their life, right? So I would want not I would want, I would say that's who true leaders need to be. Leaders need to be great human beings first. And then the second quality is all leaders are leaders who think big. I mean it. Leaders who think big. For an example, let's take the example of Mother Teresa. Is she a great human being? I think we all can agree in the world she's an amazing hum human being. And even though she's not there in this world today, physically, but energetically, spiritually, she's still here with us because we always remember her name, right? We, we remember the greatness that she left behind us the principles that love and care for people that she left behind uh, for generations to learn from her, right? That's why she's a great leader, because she's a great human being. At the same time, is she a big thinker? Is she rich and famous? Yes, she is. Do you know that the amount of money that Mother Teresa could contribute towards charity, the ability that she had to contribute and to, to kind of gather fundraising for charity was almost equal to the GDP of our country. She had that kind of power to collect that kind of money for fundraising for charity, right? So that's the kind of ability she had. She had a lot of influence towards people. So is she a direct leader or an indirect leader? Absolutely, she's a direct leader. Why? Because she's not only influencing people towards a common goal, but also towards a common, that's right, a common culture, which means she's directing people to be a certain kind of person, a certain kind of behavior, which is a great human, human being behavior, which means what? Love, care, contribution, taking care of people, you know, not looking at people as truth a truth, which means she's not looking at even if you have leprosy or even if you have some uh, element which doesn't allow you to communicate with people because of physical touch or physical contact being avoided by your medical reasons. But she would still want people to take care of these kind of people, to love these people, to contribute in these people's life. And that's what she dedicated her life to. Remember? So is she a great human being? Absolutely. So that, from my point of view, makes her a great leader. Not only a direct leader, but a great human being. And that qualifies Mother Teresa towards a brilliant leader. 
brilliant leader, an awesome leader that we want our children to become like, right? At the same time, is she a big thinker? She is an amazing big thinker. Think about it. Look at the size of her charitable institute today. She's not a small time charity institute who said, if I can make a difference in the lives of just 10 people in my life, I'm happy, I'm satisfied, satisfied and I'm done. No, she's not a small thinker. She's a big thinker. She, if she wants to make a difference in people's life, but she wants to make a difference in the lives of millions of people all over the world. She's not going to stop. She's not going to let money stop her. She's not going to let uh, any resources, lack of resources stop her. She's not going to let government policy stop her. She's not going to let people's leprosy stop her. She's not going to let anything stop her. She's not going to let her own laziness stop her. She's not going to let anything stop her. She's a big thinker and she's going to make a difference in millions of people in the world. And that's exactly what she did, right? If you look at people like Ratan Tata, principle-oriented person, absolutely principle-oriented. So is he a great human being? Absolutely. Everybody would agree that Mr. Ratan Tata is an amazing human being. At the same time, is he a big thinker? There is no doubt about it. Look at the size of the growth of the Tata Group. And he, he, he has a huge contribution on the kind of growth that Tata Group had because of his big thinking. These people never think of small numbers. These people never think of uh, making a difference on only a small group of people. They are always thinking of making a global impact on the earth. They're not just thinking about their country. They're thinking about global impact, right? That's the kind of people they are. Let's take another example. Um, Azim Premji, you know, the founder of Wipro. Huge. Look at the growth, the size of that organization. And yet, if you look at people like Azim Premji, Narayan Murthy, down to earth. Extremely down to earth. Extremely humble. They have a lot of humility. And they are known to be leaders who can be very straight with people. They can cut throat through people, through all kind of bullshit, and they can communicate to people without being fooled. So don't get me wrong, just because they are down to earth doesn't mean that you can take them for granted. But at the same time, they're amazing human beings. They're not gonna take advantage of people and make money in that way. They're gonna make money, they're gonna make it big in life, but with principles. These are people who believe in being fair. These are people who believe in being rich, but making others rich at the same time. Let me give you a perfect example right now, which is a very recent example for me today. I just completed a, a workshop yesterday in Hyderabad. I'm still in Hyderabad, by the way. That's why I couldn't make the video yesterday. And the workshop was for a company called HIL, uh, which is part of the CK Birla Group. And the CEO and managing director, uh, Mr. Dhirup, was part of the workshop with us. And I must tell you, do a little Google about him on YouTube, maybe on Google if you find him there, on LinkedIn maybe. And you'll, if you learn a little about this gentleman, he's one of the greatest human beings that I've met. I mean, awesome. Really such an amazing personality that... Just meeting him energizes me every time I meet him. This is, this is number, I think the third or the fourth time I'm meeting him uh, in engagement of a couple of workshops. And it's every time an opportunity and a privilege to meet this gentleman because he teaches me how important people are every time in the way he interacts with me, in the way he interacts with his people in front of me. I mean, simple things like when he's talking to one person, like he was talking to my wife and when he's talking to Indu, he's not even looking at me. He's just present to Indu. He's got complete dedication he's got complete eye contact to Hindu and he's got no arrogance in him no arrogance zero arrogance he's traveling the world he's he's running a 2000 crore organization maybe bigger than that right now and yet the humility he has he comes and gives me a hug and he makes me feel as if I'm equal to him and, and by no means I'm equal to him but he makes me feel that that's humbleness that's that's being a great human being right a person who's based on principles and values and you'll observe that great human beings never look down to people they always inspire people. They always make people look equal with each other. That's what makes the group an amazing human being. But again, the second quality of who's a great leader. Remember, I gave you two qualities. Who is a great leader? Two. First thing is that a, a great human being is a leader. And the second thing is a great leader is always a big thinker, right? If you look at Dhirup, and if you go back about a couple of years behind, do a little Google search on this. I met Dhirup a couple of years ago, and that time, uh, I think... Uh, in the what was it? It's 500 crore, 600 crore company turnover six, around that time. Six, they were around 600 crore turnover that time uh, in the HIL group at that point of time. And Dhirup, when he met me for the first time, and he said, Mitesh, I want to double the turnover in this year. I want to double the turnover in this year. And I know my team has the potential. And they just need a bit of channeling. They just need a, bit of, a little bit of energizing. And they need to understand the definition of leadership. They really need to be proactive. They need to take ownership. And that's why he called me for the workshop. But a couple of years ago when I did that workshop for them, believe me, participants in the group uh, who were going through the workshop with me, including me, if I may say it very honestly, had butterflies in our stomach about converting a 600 crore company into a 1,000 crore company, 1,500 crore company in just one year. And that is just a two-year-old story. And believe it, 
That time, the share value of HIL was just 600 rupees per share. And right now, as we speak, it's about 1800 rupees per share. Go and check it out for yourself. I mean, it's it's crazy. And I, when I, after I spoke to Dhirup yesterday, he told me about this, that the share value has tripled because the turnover has doubled up. You know, right now they are a 2000 crore uh, organization already. So when he told me about this and I went in last night, I did a little research on the stock value and I realized that they've gone even as high as 2,500 rupees per share, which is like four times to where they were two years ago. So is he a big thinker, bottom line? He's a huge, amazing, big thinker. And yesterday we were in the workshop and I was attending a small presentation that he gave about what's the future he looks at HIL. And I can't tell you the details, but the numbers he spoke about the next five years Wow, even I was shaken up. I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. And I said, this is big thinking. But here's another aspect I want to tell you quickly about to balance the big thinking with being a great human being. We came to know that there was this one person who, who wanted to probably move away from the organization, from his company. And you know what he tells this person? And, and he's very open about it. He says, if this person wants to leave, They've, they've, they've done great performance with my organization for the last couple of years. So why should I stop them if they want to progress? And if they feel that the progress for their career is not here right now and it's somewhere else, leave the doors open for them. There's no need to manipulate anyone. There's no need to hold anyone back. Everybody has the rights to grow in their life. So let them go. What do you learn from this? This is what I call as secured leadership secured leadership. This is not insecurity. He's not trying to grab hold of people and he's not trying to cage people and say, make money only for me. No, he's saying, you know, be a good human being first. That's more important. If, if you were my brother and if you wanted to move out of my organization and if you wanted to start a company of your own, would I be happy for you or not? Absolutely. Why? Because you're my younger brother or you're my elder brother because of my real brother, my blood brother. You know, I've seen Dhirup behaving as of this whole group it was really his family. It's as of his own blood family. He treats them like really he's their family. They are his family. And that's what makes him an amazing human being. So from my study, from my discovery, this is what I have really learned. And this is what I talk about in my leadership workshops. Is that one, leaders need to be great human beings. And two, leaders need to have big thinking. Missing any one of these qualities, you're not fully qualified to be. Or, or you're yet on the path of being a great leader. Right? So great leadership requires both these qualities. So ask yourself the first quality. Are you a great human being? You know, very honestly speaking, if I would have asked this question to myself 15 years ago, when I started training programs in 2003, 18 years ago, 17 years ago, believe me, my answer would have been no. Because, because I was selfish. I, I, I didn't really care for people. I didn't really think about people so much. You know, what makes a human being a great human being is this human being is never lonely because he's constantly thinking about others and loving and caring and contributing and being fair with other people. But who's a person who's not a great human being and yet rich and famous? Uh, might have influenced and led people towards a common goal. Maybe even made it big, big like Asaram Bapu or Rahul Gandhi. But the point is, if we are not driven by values and if we are selfish, then we're really lonely. Because inside, I'm constantly thinking about only one person in my life and who's that? Just me and myself. You know, someone like Vijay Malya. Look at how lonely he is. And there was a recent match of India versus Australia and he had gone to the stadium in UK where the match was and people were booing at him. So even though he was surrounded by people in that stadium, he's lonely, right? Why? Because uh, inside he's, he, he's, he only thought of himself when the organization needed him and he ran away, at least from my perspective. And I may be wrong and you may have a different perspective, but that's my perspective. You know, when, when his company needed him, he could have easily stayed back, sold all his properties, paid the banks back so that his employees could stay back and somehow his company would survive or at least he could have taken care of the company and closed it formally so that his employees wouldn't have to be left at the situation that they were left, you know, because he didn't think of them as family. He was constantly only thinking about himself. Now, I would say that may be leadership in terms of rich and famous, but that's not leadership in terms of what I want my children to become. Like, I would never want my children to become like Vijay Malia, at least not of what I know of him remotely right now. Right? I don't have the rights to judge him because I don't personally know him from whatever I know him already in terms of the news and what has happened with his business and what he's, what the, the actions that he's taken and the decisions that he's taken. I don't want my children to make these decisions. So from that point of view, that's not leadership because leaders, if you are only thinking of yourself and if you're only thinking of making it big financially and becoming famous, you're always going to be lonely. All right? So ask yourself, 
right now and be really honest with yourself. Are you already a great human being? Do you think of others? Do you think of being fair? Or are you constantly thinking of your own promotions? Are you constantly thinking of your own growth? Or do you dedicate time to your team? Do you really care for them? Do you really know their family family members? Do you really know uh, the members of their family personally? Do, they, do you know their names? Do you celebrate their birthdays? Do you call them to the office? Do you take care of their health? I mean, really think about it. Do you Are you really loving and caring person or are you just an ambitious person? Right? That's what's more important here. The loving and caring person needs to come first. That's a great human being. And then the ambitious person, the big thinker needs to come second in the sequence. But both are needed. Only then you become a great leader. Make sense? I wish I could talk more about this, but there's really unlimited conversation we can have about this. But I think you got the gist of it, right? Who is a great leader? A great leader is a great human being and a great thinker, a big thinker, an ambitious thinker at the same time. That's what makes a leader. So thank you so much for coming for today's video. I hope this video makes a difference in your life and it adds value to your understanding of what is leadership. And I hope this influences you to become a great human being. And at the same time, it influences you to really think big, you know, break through your fears and think big and make an impact on not only a few people in life, but on the whole world. Make it big, guys. Make it big. If you have one life, make it really big. Okay. Take care and thank you for watching this video. Again, do leave your comments uh, in this video. It'll inspire me to make more videos. If you have any specific questions about leadership, I'll try and answer them in the future videos. So put up a thumbs up there. Like the video if you did. Don't like the video, which means say if you didn't like it and maybe put up in the comments what you didn't like. I'll try to improve from there. And most importantly, hit the subscribe button so that whenever I post the videos on Mondays and Fridays, you'll immediately get it in your inbox. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.